So again, my name is Kathy. I'm the watercolor artist. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for trusting me with your, your talents and abilities and for having been on for as long as you have, because some of you have been on for a long, long time. I've done this for three years now. And so I just like to get into art mode before we start. So let's just take three deep breaths and then we'll just, you'll raise your shoulders when you breathe it, breathe it in and then just release and let go and drop those shoulders and find something in the room that you like, that makes you smile, something that's happy for you. And just give yourself the gift of this one hour of time. And I think you'll find over time, You'll, you'll remember this and do it when you get into other situations, just take a deep breath and it just eases the stress and tension in your body. So we'll start by the first deep breath going in and hold it at the top just for a second or two and release. Just let that go. Give yourself a little massage if you like. Second deep breath in and hold it at the top and find something to smile about, lots to do in a second and release. And a third deep breath in and hold it at the top and release. Beautiful, beautiful, nice and open and relaxed. So we all need a couple of containers of water. I just use a couple of buckets for water, one for clear water and one for rinsing brushes off. I like to have paper towel on hand. I have used Kleenex before, but it just doesn't hold up the same. And if you want to press and make clouds or something, you actually get a little bit of texture from paper towel too on your canvas, which looks quite nice. Brushes, I've got anywhere from uh, one, a two, a three, I think I have a five, this is a five, and I have a bigger one, I have a number six, and it's, it's, a, it's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna call it a mop brush because it has, a, a, it'll hold a lot more water. And I'm not insisting anybody get any particular types of brushes. Um, it's up to you, whatever works for you. I do use, um, Curry's brushes a lot. So if you see me using the black brushes, those are Curry's, but it's up to you. It's a little bit of a um, detailed picture, but the words are nothing. It's just squiggles on a page. It's to look like writing. So don't worry about that unless you wanted to write something specific on your page. Good for you if you decided to do that. I just made it random. And I also used green tape just to go around the outside of my canvas. And I just, what I do when I tape, I'm just try to make it as even as possible, the overlap of paper and tape on all four sides. That way, when you take the tape off, you have an even line or fairly, fairly even line. And the top part is, is a lot of white, but we're going to splash some paint on there to give it a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna just turn my camera around and we'll look at the drawing and we'll get going. We'll have some fun with color. So this is the picture and all we're doing is an open book. The colors today are sap green, purple. If you don't have purple, you can make purple with red and blue, black, ochre, burnt sienna and raw umber or raw umber is just a brown burnt sienna is a terracotta pot color sort of a reddish brown and a sharpie pen if you have it or some kind of pen i'm just going to use a sharpie pen it's got a nice fine point so you're just looking for something with a fine point just to do the edges this is fairly fine just to do the edges of the pages. And if you don't have those exact colors, don't panic, it's okay, it's okay. Sap green can just be a lightened regular green. It's only for a variation during our picture to have something a little bit different. And a blow dryer, because once we get this wet, before we start with the Sharpie, 
we're going to want to blow dry, make sure that it's dry before we put that on. Otherwise, we'll get some blurring of that black line. This is just uh, uh, my backboard. It's just a, an old placemat that I've cut in half. So it's um, useful. I can get two, two out of it and it wipes up really, really clean. So easy to use. Here's my picture. We're ready to go. We're going to work with just clear water to start. And my largest brush. So this is my largest brush. This is a number six. And I'm just going to get a little bit of the edges of the book on the front of the book, just the outer edges wet. It's not, I'm not trying to wet the whole book. I just want that edge. So I've only put clear water around just on the pages, the top pages that are showing. And if you've had time to do that, now I'm going to go into ochre. So I've just got a little bit of ochre on my brush and I've primed my canvas just by getting it wet. And I'm gonna put on a little bit of ochre. And I'm not, I'm not getting too fixed on being exact. If I go out of my lines, that's okay. And I'm not getting any extra paint. I'm just putting on what I've got on my brush. It doesn't have to be dark or light. It doesn't have to go to the outside edges. I've got some white showing here and there. So see, I haven't even gone all the way to the corner. I've left some spaces and it's lighter and darker. So this isn't a project that is specific to do anything exact. Then without using water, just using ochre on my brush, I'm just a little bit watered down so it's not full strength. I'm going to put a little bit of ochre on the bottom page that you can see, just on the outer edge, just on that corner. It's on the right-hand side on the corner. So it's not even a whole lot of paint going on there. And I'm going to texturize with the same color, not putting any extra on my brush, the other corner, that page that you see. And I'm going to make that cur curve where the page flips over in ochre. I've got a little bit of pooling of color here. It looks a little bit dark. I can rub my brush to lift some of that off if I like, or I could just have left it. It's, there is nothing wrong here, nothing that we're going to do that's going to be wrong. This is very loose painting, very flowy. So if you get stressed when you're doing this and you're worried about what you're doing and oh my goodness, it doesn't look like this or it doesn't look like that. This is just a piece of paper. Please remember that it's not, um, there's no need for perfection. It's just learning and trying different techniques, different colors, different, where different colors look best. Next color I'm going to go on to is the purple. If you don't have purple, you can mix blue and red together and you'll come up with the purple or a mauve color. And I'm still using my larger brush with this mauve color and I'm coming down the outside pages of the book, just on the right side, the open, the open top part of the book. I'm also going to run down the side where the book is laying flat. I'm going to run the same purple along the bottom just a little bit. If you leave white spaces, it's okay. If you go over, over your lines, that's okay. 
if you're beyond that, and I'll come up the side of the book. So just a little bit of purple. It can be lighter or darker. It doesn't have to be exact, and it doesn't even have to be a straight line. On the other side of the book that's laying flat, I'm just going to put a little bit of purple on there and some purple on the bottom. As I said, it's not critical that it's a straight line. If you look closely at my lines, they're not straight lines. What's going to happen when we put our black lines on, it will give a little bit more detail to the look of pages. And I'm going to put a little bit more purple on my brush very deliberately and it's watered down. So I'm still using my big brush and I'm going to, now I can use two brushes to do this. I can use my, my um, pen to do this, but I'm going to flick paint onto my page, just random, just here and there. If I put paint in places where I don't want it, I can just use my paper towel and tap that off. That's okay. I don't want those pages to look completely perfect. But this is part of our background, just having some of that splash of paint around. Now remember that watercolor is going to dry 20 to 30% lighter from when you put it on. So if it's looking really dark, it will lighten up. We also have sap green or lightened green. So I've gone into my sap green and I've added water. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to add a little bit of that green just here and there. And if I don't want it on my page, I can just use a pa my paper towel and just take that excess off. So I'm just looking for some splashes of color here and there. It sort of makes a background on your picture. And I'm going back to the ochre, the very first color. So you can see it's lightened quite a bit. It's lightened a lot since I put it on. But I'm going to use the ochre. And if I don't use the pen, I can just use my, use my brush and just, just sort of flick colors. We lost her for a moment. She'll be right back. Again, I can just tap off or you know, just wipe off with the paper towel. So I've still got my book there, but I've got some nice color in the background. Now we want to dry this completely before we move ahead. So hopefully you have a blow, a blow dryer and take your time blow drying. So hopefully you have a blow dryer. <clears throat> I'm going to mute my, myself so that you don't hear a big loud noise.
So let's start to create those pages. And we can start with the top of the book with the black gel pen or your black Sharpie. And I'm not necessarily even too worried about having a straight line. If it has wiggles in it, that's okay. If you don't have a steady hand, that's okay. And you don't need to stay within the, the lines that you painted. You can go outside a little bit. So not to worry about anything. Just if you need to take a deep breath before you start, go ahead. I'm doing this kind of freehand. It's easier if it's laying down, but you know, it's it's okay. On camera is fine. So I'm just going to follow my lines that I've drawn. Just draw those outer pages. And you can see they're not perfectly straight and that's okay. And if I want to add, just to embellish and add a few more extra lines, I can do that just to make that look like a thicker book. That's fine. I'm going to come back and add a little bit of color on some of these anyway, so it, you'll be able to cover over some of your lines. And then we'll work to work to the book underneath. So it is underneath, so it does need to tear down a little bit. Come right down to the corner, adding a few lines. So we're just, we've already hand drawn it in with pencil. So we're just going over those lines. And that book does come into a triangle, a little bit of a triangle from the outer edge, just the way that the book is laying down and the pages are moving upwards. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing or making your lines. It does come to a bit of a point at the end. I'm only working with the right side at this point. So the same, we'll do the bottom right along the e outer edge. And we're going to leave this center point. We will come back and we'll paint on that spot. And if you're ready, we'll move on to the top, the top corner, coming down to the center. Don't be too concerned about this area that it's dark in the picture. We're just going to do the fine line first, and then we'll add some paint. And we'll do the outer edge coming down to the corner. And from that corner in towards the center. We'll do the outside edge. We've got a few lines coming down. One comes to the top of the page. One comes down a little bit farther. Another one a little bit farther and the outside right to the bottom of the book. And if I come across the bottom, give a nice flat edge to the bottom, just stopping at that little point. Remember, we're going to paint this. This is where the inside of the book is joined together. So we will be painting that at the bottom. There are a few pages that are flat. A 
but then we have a lifted, we have the look of lifted pages. So we need to make an arch. So this is where we're directing the eye to give that look of those lifted pages on the book. And let's come down the center of this book. And it doesn't even have to be a complete line. You can leave some gaps, but this is the spine in the center of the book. That's the point where my pen goes away. So if, you, if you're still finishing, that's fine. If you're not finished, continue on if you like. If you want to add a few more lines to your book, you can do that. You certainly have free artist impression to put whatever you need or want to, to make it look like a more full book. But while you're doing that, I will read today's card. It's our halftime card. It says, I connect with nature today. Spend some time outdoors today. Breathe in the fresh air. Relax under a tree. Take in the whole sky. Notice that nature isn't judging you. Hmm, isn't that nice? I connect with nature today. Spend time outdoors today. Breathe in the fresh air. Relax under a tree, even if it's cold. <laughs> Take in the whole sky. Nature, notice that nature isn't judging you. Well, thank you for who said stop for that card. Thank you very much for that message today. And that is the message for all of us, just to take in a bit of nature. So we've got this far, now we're gonna add a little bit more color. Let's have some fun with our color. I'm going to move on to a number three pointed brush. I may not use my five today, but I have a number three pointed brush. So this is my Curry's brush. I'm just gonna dip it in some water, get my brush wet with a Ross, a burnt, a burnt Sienna. This is my, my terracotta color. It looks like a terracotta pot, a bit rusty looking. And what I want to do underneath this page, I want to create the look of a shadow where this page is sitting on top, where the, where the light is, sh is shadowing under this page onto the next page. It's not even, a, it's just sort of an awkward shape, not perfect. So it just gives that look. So if you need to add a little bit more color rather than water, we're just looking for a shadow under the page. And I'm adding a little bit more each time just to give a little bit more depth. And I can bring that right almost down to that triangle. And we want to give that same look on the other pages. So let's create a shadow on the other side, coming down to where that page turns, where that page starts to curl. And I have a little bit of pooling of color just because it had a lot of water in it. So I'm just gonna use my paper towel. I need to have paper towel, that's why. And I'll just pick up that extra pooling.
and that's dried a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of extra color now that it's dried and that's color on color on color. It doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt to add a little bit of extra, but as everything dries that much lighter from the time we put it on, if you wanna add a little bit of extra color, go right ahead. It's just our shadow. And that same color, the burnt sienna, is the color that we're going to use for the lettering. But our next color is the burnt umber. So burnt umber is a brown. So if you have a soft brown, now's the time to pull that out. And we'll just add a little bit of depth in the sides of our books, just here and there in and amongst that purple that we put on. So still let that purple show through, but we'll put some of that burnt umber just in and around just to give it a little bit extra added depth. And the same on the outer edge of the book. So again, watercolor is color on color, just blending and mixing, not necessarily anything completely perfect. I don't want to have chevron lines, but I do want to have a little bit of color in amongst that purple. And I'll do the same at the bottom on the other side, just adding a little bit of that color in and amongst the purple, the burnt umber. So I still have that purple coming through and I have that purple also in my background. See, I have a little bit of that purple, so it pulls it all together. And I'm going to take a little bit of that color, that burnt umber, that brown, and I'm going to make a line at the bottom of my page on the left-hand side, just to thicken that a little bit more. So I'm coming right down to that center crease. So continuing to move from, from this color that we put on the outer edge of our page, which was ochre, I'm going to go into a fresh ochre with very little water. And I'm going to just give a little bit of detail to that center line, just to antique those pages just a little bit. I'm still going to paint that center line. So I'm gonna stay away from it, just letting it dry a little bit. And I'm going back into that fresh ochre. I'm gonna do my corner, just lightly, just letting that brush, just holding the end of my brush, just at the end of my brush. And just let that color come off your brush wherever it wants to go. If it wants to go right to the corner, you can direct it a little bit, but just let that brush, just, just kind of pick up some of that color. You can go to the other side, the other corner of the book. Still, I'm holding my brush right at the very end, very light touch, just flicking that paint, just letting it move. Just sort of antiquing my book a little bit. And run a little bit more of that ochre on that front page at the corner underneath. 
and the other page, the other corner. So again, I'm just holding the tip of my brush. I'm not having a heavy hand. So just lightly letting it just move. And just trust in the process. Just trust that, that it's going to be beautiful when you're finished. So if you want to lighten any of that up, just use, a, a, put your brush, clean it off in water just a little bit, tap it off on paper towel, and just with a damp brush, if you want to move any of that color, with a damp brush, that paint has no choice but to move. So I kind of like those blotchy marks on there looking like that page is kind of antiqued. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. And in watercolor, leaving white is what attracts your eye. If we were doing an acrylic painting, we would actually be painting white on. I know they sell white acrylic or white watercolor paint, but the, the objective of watercolor is to leave white and that's what draws the eye. Next color we're going to go into, if you've got this far, is to use our black paint. So I'm, I'm using my, still using my number three pointed brush with black paint, straight black paint. If you don't have black paint and you have gray, that's fine. If you have a Payne's gray or, or some other gray, that's fine. But we're going to paint this little section of the book where when the book is open, this is where the spine is, where it all joins together. And there's that opening and there's a shadow there. So we're going to paint that shadow in. So it's not a perfect triangle, it doesn't need to be a perfect triangle. And if your black, if you have too much water on your black, tap your brush off on paper towel and go back into fresh paint, more paint, less water, and you'll have a deeper color. The same color black, again, more paint, less water. We're going to create the look of the depth of the top of the book. So we're painting in a small V at the top. It doesn't have to be an exact even V. It can be wider on one spot, probably better visually if it is a little bit longer on one, top, on one spot than the other. And then we're going to fill in that center. So I'm just doing small, short, feathery strokes for the center of my book. Not necessarily all joined. Sometimes when you get a book, it has staples in it or it has divisions that aren't always a straight line. So if you don't have a steady hand, this is another perfect project for you. Next, I'm going to switch back, or I'm going to switch to a very tiny bristle brush. So if you have a fine liner that is colored that you would prefer to use, then you're welcome to do that. I'm going to do this with the brush and I've penciled in some markings that look like words on the page. And I'm going to go ahead with the raw sienna, the same color that I did my shadow, my shadows underneath. I'm going to use that same color, although this shadow underneath has dried a little bit lighter than the lettering that I'm going to do on the page. So I'm going to go full strength raw sienna. 
which again, I would say is more paint than water. And I'm just going to start just putting those little markings where I penciled them in. And I'm just painting them in. And I can put dots here and there, I don't need to. I'm not writing anything specific. If you were making this a memoir and you were putting in something specific, then that's up to you. You have artists, the right to do whatever. This is your painting, this is your book. And I'm just filling in wherever I've got that pencil, making it look like scroll or write certain kind of writing. It'd be like a doctor's note. If you're a doctor, forgive me. <laughs> And if this is stressing you out going onto the white page, just take a deep breath and remember this is just a piece of paper. If you are not happy with what the result has been the first time around trying this, please don't let this be the last time. Try it again, the recording will be available. And I'm going to go on the other side and do the same where I've got the pencil. I'm just going over it with raw sienna. And I'm doing more paint than water so that it's, it, this is, I want this to look very clear, not legible, but very clearly looking like there's writing of some sort on the page. have some fun with this. Let's do some wiggly letters. As I said, take a deep breath. If you like, and you don't want it to look too left out, you can put a few of those squiggles down on the page underneath. Leave room for your signature at the bottom. And you can put a few on the other side. It doesn't necessarily have to look like anything. Just some squiggles on the page. Looks like a bit of a book. Something's happening there. There's a story somebody wanted to tell. And I'm just going to run a little bit of ochre over the top of those pages that are curved, just to highlight that a little bit. It just looked a little bit left out. And I'm going to use my black brush or my, my, my narrow brush with black paint. And I'm just going to highlight just a few spots on the spine of my book, just with black, just to pull that color together. to accent the sides of my book just a little bit with the black not a whole lot just a little bit 
And you can see it doesn't have to be a straight line, doesn't have to be perfect. It's just, just adding a little bit more depth, giving a little bit more shadowing. And what's left to do is to decide where do you want to put your artist signature. You could spend all day fussing and doing all kinds of extra things. And if you want to do that, if you want to change, add, use a ruler, straighten some of your lines, that's entirely up to you. But this is a nice description or a nice um, demonstration of how to paint an open book. If you were looking to make a... Um, uh, a storybook for for someone and you wanted to put a picture on the front you could certainly put a picture on there you could put your family tree on there but at this point i'm just going to close this off just by signing my signature at the end of it there's my story so i hope you enjoyed that one we bye